Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we are going to be building an early version of the solar system. So, disclaimer before we even start, we're basing off theories here, this isn't fact, if you think different that's fine, it, we can all have an opinion but we're never really probably going to know what the early solar system looked like anyway. So this is all theoretical, a little bit of fantasy probably uh, thrown in there as well but yeah we're going to have a shot at building sort of an early model of the solar system so so far i've set up the sun so i've just called it young sun it's not as luminous as it is today it's uh, radius is also smaller than the sun obviously it's got one mass as always so um luminosity is smaller so that's the one thing we're going to want to take notice of here and as you can probably tell there's no planets in here yet all we've got is the uh current dwarf planets um, as we can see here, so I'm going to leave those roughly where they are because I don't really know much about um, the, the dwarf planets. But one thing I do know, obviously, early in the solar system, I don't think the orbits would have been this elliptical. So what we're going to do to start off with, so we've got all these objects here. I'm not even sure the goblin is even confirmed anymore, actually. I think a few people said about that. But yeah, we'll keep it in here just for fun. So what we're going to do is eccentric. We're going to lower this all the way down. Because we haven't got any planets yet, or the planet, even the pl early planets, they wouldn't have exactly pushed all of these things out yet. So, obviously, the solar system's less developed, there'll be less elliptical orbits. So, we're going to start off by making all of the dwarf planets. Um, that's not what I wanted to do for um, far out, though. So, let's quickly uh, put that back to where it was. So, we need to use the eccentric button, not the other one. So, for instance, this one as well. I'm going to lower that all the way down. So, we can see far out. We can see Sedna, obviously less eccentric than it was before. So we can obviously lower that all the way down. So we can see the orbit's already starting to look a little more nice. We've got some of the other dwarf planets out here. Again, I will do the same with those. So we're just going to sort of fix the eccentric um, problem. We've also got the Kuiper Belt objects here, which are fairly normal anyway. So it's just mainly the uh, further ones out. So stuff like the Goblin and Sedna, we could probably we could probably get away with sneaking these orbit times down. So maybe we're going to try and move all the objects into the original sort of Kuiper Belt area. Because what I sort of want to aim with this is also to build the solar system during the heavy bombardment period sort of era. So this is where Feyre, the dwarf, or I say dwarf planet, Feyre the planet, I should say, existed. So the planet that collided with Earth theoretically. Remember, this is all theoretical. It's not fact. So if you think different, that is fine. So going to just lower all those down so all the dwarf planets are sort of more in the kuiper belt where they would have formed so we can see some of the orbits are still a little flipped around so we can obviously also fix the um inclination area so we can sort of just make it make it a little more smooth looking we've got a few more um chilling out here so again we'll make the eccentric stuff going to lower the eccentric down and then it incline as well we're just going to lower that so we're sort of fixing the solar system up a bit so again with this object as well so we're going to yep lower the eccentric button and we're going to lower the incline. Okay, so that sort of gives us this now. There's a, one more object out here. I'm trying to spot where it is, actually. So, uh, which one is it? What orbit is that? Uh, let's see, where is it? Is it, is it? I'm actually really struggling to see what orbit. Okay, it's this one down here. Right, so we're just going to fix uh, 2013 FY27. So, we'll go ahead and just quickly... Yep, there you go. Okay, so that's sort of uh, blended in with the Kuiper Belt area now. So, we can see it's all it's still... The objects are still all a little flipped around in there, but that's fine. Okay, so we've got obviously all the current known dwarf planet, sort of um, the big ones anyway. Um, is Eris in here somewhere? I can't see Eris. Where, where's Eris gone? Have we got Eris in here? Eris? Where, where are you at? No, no I don't want to press that. Uh, Eris. Whereabouts Eris gone? Orcus. Oh, no, there. Okay. Oh. Oh, right. Okay. Is it? Is it? Wait, Eris is broken? Where, where, where's? Ah, there you go. Okay, there it is. So it looks like we just need to. Um, ah, there you go. Let's pull it to what? There you go. Now we can see where Iris is. So I was wondering where it was. I was expecting the white trail. So I'll see Iris as well. We're going to lower your um, inclination, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, eccentric. We're just going to sort of fix you in the Kuiper Belt sort of area. So the Kuiper Belt's a little more put together than it normally is. If we head to the inner solar system, we've obviously got the, the, the few of the Asteroid Belt um, highlights. The Pallas, Ceres, Hygieia, Vesta, all of the big ones in there. Uh, then we've got um, Chiron and um, the one I can never say. So this one here, this normally sits in between uh, Saturn and Uranus, but we're going to leave those two because I don't know much about those, where they would have started from. So they're just going to stay in there. Right now, we're going to throw a system save in, and we're not going to mess it up like we did before. So I'll just reset that for time. So a young solar system, and then update 26.3.1. So we're going to go ahead and replace that. So we're going to make regular saves here because this could go wrong very fast if I do the wrong things. Right now, on to adding the planets themselves. So we're going to start off with the outer solar system because in theory the outer planets did... Um, exist first so jupiter saturn 
Then there's the fifth giant, or Planet Nine, possibly, maybe maybe the fifth gas giant that was possibly ejected was Planet Nine. That's all theoretical again, because there was a theory that the solar system actually started with five gas giants, and one of them got tossed out, and obviously that would have messed all these orbits up. But since that hasn't happened in this time yet, we can have the fifth gas giant sitting in between Saturn and Uranus, where it's theoretically could have been. So five gas giants, and then we're going to have it would be five rocky planets as well so for instance right what are we gonna so we want to add jupiter first so we're gonna go with the good old um custom ones here so right distance from the sun what are we thinking so jupiter we're gonna put it around five five i think four five au so jupiter's roughly where it would yeah close to where it would barely be now so i'm gonna place uh, jupiter around there so we've got it in there just ignore the F at the start of the name. That's just so I can categorize them a little easier in my uh, menu. But yeah, we've got Jupiter there. Nice, one of the modded ones. So we're going to leave that there. So we've got Jupiter in. Right, next up, we're going to go with Saturn. So I think we'll go with the um, we'll go with the nicer customized Saturn here. So Saturn, it's going to be a little closer to where, where um, Jupiter is than it is in the present day. So we're going to put Saturn around. I think Saturn, I just I got, I wrote some numbers down of just theoretical sort of areas where it could have been. So we're going to put Saturn... I'd say around seven, 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 two, three, four, something. So, so seven, three. I'm going to put it there. So that's from the sun. So you can see Jupiter and Saturn are a lot closer than they are today because obviously the solar system's less developed. The gas giants haven't really sorted their orbits out yet. So we've got Jupiter and Saturn. Then next up, we would have had the theoretical fifth gas giant. So this could have this is in theory the object that could be known as Nemesis or Planet Nine, stuff like that. So we're going to go with our good old Planet Nine. We're going to rename it though. So this is the fifth gas giant that may or may not still exist somewhere it could have been tossed out the system completely but if it got tossed out that in theory could have upset the orbits over here so for the time being though we're going to do the solar system with the fifth gas giant actually in here but remember this system isn't exactly stable with having these gas giants closer together because the solar system has like i said it hasn't sorted itself out yet so these orbits are still could uh, interrupt each other and change. So we'll have a little experiment at the end. So the fifth gas giant was theoretically around 9, 10 AU um, from what I'm reading. So 9 or 10, we're going to place the uh, fifth gas giant. So where are we from the sun? I was looking at the wrong value. So 8, okay, I get around 9 AU, 9, 10-ish. So we're going to place it around 9, 3, I guess. We're going to place the planet 9 there. But we're going to rename it to the fifth gas giant or fifth gas giant slash planet 9 because obviously it wouldn't be the ninth planet at the moment. So... Actually, I'll call it Planet... I guess it would be Planet 6, because Feia... We haven't added Feia in yet, so it would be 6. So, that's added in now. So, Planet 6. Now, we're going to use the template of Planet 9. I have no idea how large the 5th... Or, or this would be the 6th planet, uh, actually. So, we're just going to leave that for the time being. Now, we're going to head to the other two um, ice giants we know, or gas giants. So, Uranus and Neptune. So, Uranus will go with the good old... Um, just go with the good old one here, with the um, customised one. So... Uranus, around 15-ish AU, so we're going to place Uranus here. Uh, there we go, 15, uh, somewhere roughly here from the sun, 15, 16 AU, so we're going to place it there. And then lastly, we've got good old Neptune. Uh, what one should we use for Neptune? Uh, I'll go with the um, yeah, I'll go with the um, slightly uh, increased banded version, not the full-on banded one, though, so I don't want to make it too laggy. So Neptune, obviously, not as far away from the sun as it is at the moment because there was the theory that Neptune sort of migrated out into the Kuiper Belt area and that's where it caught Triton. So we'll be getting onto Triton shortly. So Neptune, we're going to put it around 20. Normally, it'd be 30 AU. So this is where Neptune would normally sit, roughly here. But we're going to put Neptune at 20. So we can see, obviously, a lot closer than where it is at the present day. So we'll put Neptune over here, just away from the other planets for the time being. So... About 20 AU, so we're going to put Neptune there. So we can already see the gas giant orbits. There's quite a lot going on. They're quite close to each other here. So we've got Neptune. Now this, take keep in mind, this is before Neptune would have migrated outwards. So maybe the ejection of the, uh, the, the notorious fifth gas giant, or obviously planet six here. So the fifth gas giant in our solar system, if that got ejected, that could have pushed Neptune further out. It could have uh, and obviously that would have upset the dwarf planets as well. Remember, this is all theoretical. It's all speculation, just a bit of fun. So we're going to have that there. Now, on to Triton. So remember, Triton's actually larger than any of the other dwarf planets we know. So in theory, Triton is the largest dwarf planet because Triton isn't going to be orbiting Neptune. We're going to have Triton as its own body around the system. So I actually built a nice custom one before we started. So Triton, in theory, it would be around 30 AU because that's where Neptune is roughly right now, 30 AU away. 
So we're going to put Triton around 30 AU from the sun. So we're going to pull it here. And that, and obviously, we can see this sort of blends in well with where the other Kuiper Belt objects are. So Triton has its own dwarf planet. We can see Pluto over there as well. Um, here's the customized variant I'm using. So it's very dark over here. I built it. Um, tried to match it with some more the realistic sort of shades. I've got some dark patches on it. We've got a bit of like light blue, a bit of like light purpley shades in there. So I just have a little go at building a Triton. So back to realistic. So Triton's its own dwarf planet at the moment. So looking good. So now we've got the outer solar system built. So we can see the early version of the outer solar system. So Jupiter, Saturn, the planet, the fifth gas giant, planet six, Uranus, Neptune, and then we've got Triton in the dwarf planet area. And obviously the dwarf planets, the Kuiper belt, they're a little more organized than they are today because the uh, ejection of uh, the sixth planet hasn't happened yet. So looking good, right. Now heading to the inner solar system. And I know that wouldn't be the... I think that would be planet seven, wouldn't it? If we had five in the inner solar system, Jupiter would be six, seven. Yeah, so I've I completely mucked that up. So we'll, we'll just call it... We'll just have it known as the... Um, yeah, that was a complete failure on my part. Apologies for that. So we'll just have it as the... Um, yeah, we'll call it... Oh, God, I can't even spell now. So we'll call it the fifth... Fifth gassy, I guess, for the time being. Uh, fifth. That's... Um, that's quite a um, silly uh, failure there. So there you go. Fifth gassy. So... Obviously, Jupiter, Saturn, that would be two. Uranus, Neptune, three and four. And then this is the fifth giant that could have existed. So, right, we'll have that there. So, fifth gassy, so we don't get mixed up trying to mess or get the planet numbers correctly. So, right, now onto the inner solar system. So, back in the uh, old days, Earth, Theia, since they were still obviously competing for the superior object in that orbit, they, they could be a little further from the sun than they are now. So... Ooh, I don't know what to use for us. So we'll use the generic sort of... And Venus. Remember, Venus. The sun isn't as bright here. Venus may have been a little more friendly than it is today. So we're going to maybe make a little more uh, less hot version of Venus. But we also got to remember, this is during the bombardment period. So the, the inner planets in theory are still forming. They're still collecting material. So we are going to add an asteroid belt in the inner outer area. So we're going to have a huge asteroid belt covering the whole solar system here because the solar system still hasn't sorted itself out at this point in time. So, right. What are we thinking? So Mercury, we could probably sneak Mercury, the current normal version of Mercury in here. So we're going to, Mercury around 0 0.5 0 ish AU. We're going to place Mercury there. So Mercury's placed in. Right. Venus. How are we going to build a Venus? So, ah, let's think. Uh, Venus... I'm trying to think. Can we get a Venus texture? Okay, I've got an idea. Right, so I'm going to use the current Venus. So we're going to put Venus... Uh, so where Venus is around 0, zero 7, isn't it? So we're going to place it around around there. So Mercury, Venus are added in. But what we need to do with Venus? Back in the old days, Venus theoretically wouldn't have been this hot yet because the sun is obviously releasing less energy and Venus wouldn't have built up its clouds yet. So in theory, this atmosphere needs to be turned down or removed. So... For instance, 85. We're going to lower this down to so 0.5 maybe. I, I want it so we can see the surface. So we're just going to have a bit of fun. So something like that. So Venus hasn't really built its um, horrid, horrid atmosphere yet. And what we're going to do as well is surface layer, colors, custom. So we're going to make Venus look a little more friendly looking. So colors, um, what is it? Can I even customize the colors? Are you going to sort yourself out, Venus? Come on. You want to customize your colors? No? Maybe I'll just have to turn to the generic Venus if this one won't work. This is a custom variant, remember, so... Have we, we haven't got any ice on it, have we? Oh, we could add oceans to Venus. The theoretical Venus may have been an ocean world at one point. We could always sneak this in. So, okay, so that, that won't work. So we'll just use we'll use the generic Venus since we can't customize that one, which is quite annoying, don't get me wrong. So, yeah, normal old Venus here. Uh, 0 0.7 ish AU, thank you very much. Right, Venus. Right, so back to you. Please, can we customize you? Right. So let's just... Uh, atmosphere, we wanted it at 0.7, so we can obviously make it so it's... Uh, so we can actually see down to the surface for a change. So... Yeah, Venus is steamy clouds. In theory, they wouldn't have been as uh, horrendous as they are today. So there we go. So we can see down to the surface. Right, can we just customize the surface, please? Right, so... Surface layer. No, we don't want that. Surface colors are custom. Right, can we customize this now? There you go. Okay, cool. Right, so... And an inferior atmosphere color. I don't, Venus, uh, why are we on Uranus? No, Venus. There you go. And actually, while I'm here, we will throw a save in since we have built the outer solar system bit now. So let's get that saved in. Right, cool. 
So I'm liking how this is going first, but I, I'm definitely going to run this at the end and see how hectic it could get. Maybe maybe it'll end up like it is today, maybe it won't. I mean, we'll just have a bit, little bit of an experiment. So, okay, that's fine. We don't need to worry about the orbit for the time being. So underneath, right. What would Venus have looked like more in the early days? Maybe, maybe Venus would have had water on it. Who knows? So, I mean, I'm, we're not going to make it like a colonized, like green. It's not going to be colonized. We're still going to have it as a fairly sort of rocky, maybe a bit of sandy sort of color to it. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really bet on snow either. But what we're going to do is atmosphere. It's going to be a lot more friendly than it is for the time being. So, what, so atmosphere, obviously, not. We're not going to have it in green. So maybe, maybe a little more to the blue, the blue side. So Venus hasn't really sorted its uh, nasty atmosphere out. So we're going to go the, the theoretical Venus was a more of a watery world at one point. So go in that. Remember, it's not fact. We're just doing it for a bit of fun. So yeah, if you're gonna. Let us know in the comments that, oh, this isn't real, blah, blah, blah. Well, remember, this is all theoretical. So we're just having a bit of fun building a possible early solar system here. So Venus, I mean, yeah, it's not sorted itself out yet. And we'll sneak it just a tiny, tiny bit of water on it. Um, I don't know how the temperature of Venus is going to work yet either, because obviously we're in an early version of the solar system here. So the sun isn't as bright. Venus's atmosphere hasn't sorted itself out yet. So we can still see Venus is getting some temperature from the sun. Um, so, yeah, we'll leave that. That's fine. So, Venus, okay, it's got some clouds as well, eh? So we can still see to the surface. Um, I will lower the atmosphere a bit more so we can see a little more. Um, so let's just lower it down. Okay, that's uh, maybe a little too much, so add a, add a bit more on. So it's still got a bit of the haste. It's quite rocky underneath, obviously not as hot as it is now. So that's all calmed down a bit. But I do want to see, can we get just a tiny bit of water on the surface for a bit of fun with the possible Venus as an ocean world? Come on. Water? No? Ah, ah there, okay. Yes. So we'll just let Venus sort itself out. Bit of water going on. Obviously not colonized or anything like that. So it's got a bit of water. A little more Earth-like sort of early Earth prototype Venus version here. The Earth that went wrong, maybe, because it was too close to the sun. So early Venus. Possibly it had water. Possibly it didn't. It's got a nicer trail color as well, actually. That's looking good. So there's an early possible version of Venus. I mean, remember, it's all theoretical. So, right, there we go. We've got that built. We can always come back to that later if we want to change it more. So now we'll save it again. So we've got our customized Venus in here. So now looking at the system. So how have we got? So we've got Mercury, Venus. They're all placed in nicely. So we still have Earth, Theia, and Mars to complete. And also the outer solar system is already built fairly nicely. We've got Triton as its own uh, dwarf planet for the time being before Neptune migrated out and captured it. So... Right, next up we've got Earth and Theia. Because remember, Earth and Theia, they could have shared quite a similar orbit. So, Earth. We're going to use the generic Earth, but also we're going to customize it because it doesn't have the same consonants as it does now. So, Earth around 1 point... Yeah, around 1 point... Yeah, somewhere around 1.8. I'm going to put Earth there. And then we need to do... Do I still have a copy of Theia? I'm not sure if I do. Okay, I do. Oh, I do. Okay. So, Earth and Theia, they're going to have quite similar orbits because in theory they clashed. So... Yeah, Earth and Fair, they would have clashed. So their orbits are going to be very, very similar. And they're going to be upsetting each other a lot, sharing a similar orbit. So we'll put them around opposite sides for the time being. So Earth and Fair, very, very close together. And what we can do as well, we can make them slightly eccentric so they do cross over. So just a t now that, that's too much. Now we do not want to do that. So just have it as a nice little... It's just so they cross over each other so they eventually clash. So, I mean, if we can run the simulation and they actually clash, that would be really cool. So... Uh, again with you, I don't know what's going on with the incline there. So yeah, we don't want to just leave that down for the time being. So eccentric. Just a tiny bit on Fair as well. I actually gave it a Mars trail. This is a really old copy of Fair. And then what we can do with these, um, yeah, we can uh, rotate it around a bit just so it sort of blends in with that Earth orbit. I mean, yeah, they can get a little close. I mean, they are getting really close. They would really clash at that point. So yeah, their orbits are going to be very, fairly similar. So they would eventually crash into each other. So Fair and Earth are spawned in. Right, now we'll see Earth. We'll head to Theia in a second. Obviously, Earth didn't look like this all the way back in the bombardment period. The continents were probably still sorting themselves out with the tectonics and stuff. So, obviously, we're going to give you a full refresh surface of Earth. There you go. Looking good. We'll keep the atmosphere and the clouds the same. I think we can I think we can get away with that. Um, obviously, it's already got the water uh, built on. So, early version of Earth here. Still sorting itself out during the bombardment period. So, in theory, it could be a lot hotter. There could be a lot of asteroids crashing into it. Um, we'll increase the water, maybe, a, yeah, just so there's a little more going on. Well, actually, no, no. What we'll do, we can use the new sea level feature. So, wh wh where's the sea level? Uh, I can never find the thing. Right, sea level. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So, early continents. 
Well, maybe this is before the consonants, actually. Who knows? So, okay. And then the, uh, where is the other option? I want to do the elevation. Yes, right. So I want to do a U is, I'm going to lower it so the snow goes away a bit. So maybe somewhere like that. Yeah, I don't want to have too much. So yeah, still, still, obviously Earth's got a lot of water on it. So yeah, okay, that's fine. So an early version of Earth, it's obviously got snow, clouds, obviously no green uh, grasslands and dinosaurs or anything yet. This would have been before that. So uh, yeah, that's all fine. Obviously, it's still got the same old stats as Earth. That's all good, good. Atmosphere, obviously, would be different to it is now, but we're just going to leave it the way it is. And actually, what we could do, actually, we could have a slight change to the atmosphere because obviously it wouldn't be the same as it is now. So we'll have a, we'll, we'll have a little uh, play with it. So we'll make it a little more, maybe a little more uh, steamy. Possibly a lot of steam going on in the atmosphere due to impacts and stuff like that. So we got a little more steamy sort of blue. So yeah, early prototype of Earth. I'm not sure I like the surface texture actually. So I'm going to give it a refresh again. So come on, give us a nicer looking surface texture. Maybe maybe we can sneak away with that. Maybe not. No no, I don't want that. No, come on, give us a give us a nicer texture. How are we looking there? Is that is that looking better? See, there's only all the waters in one area. I want the water to be equally sort of disputed across. Okay, yeah, okay, there you go, okay, I'll roll that. Uh, city lights need to go, because obviously no humanity for a long time yet. Obviously the similarity in life has changed a bit since we have uh, corrupted the earth a bit. So, um, customization, city lights need to go, so where are we? Uh, no vegetation yet, interface, we'll give it, yeah, we'll just make it a slightly more sort of paler blue. Uh, snow and ice, that's fine. Or maybe we could have volcanic, maybe volcanic sort of areas are still on the earth at this point, it's still forming after all. Ice... Yeah, we could, have, we could have, like, the volcanic sort of looking areas as well. So darken that down a bit. Uh, snow, vegetation, uh, interface, that's fine. Uh, where are lights? Where, where are the city lights at? Okay, there we go, right. Off. Good, good. Okay. So there's an early version of Earth as a exa rough example. So um, default or custom. Oh, we want custom, don't we? So, oh, right. So what are we thinking? Could have some white patches. I mean, maybe we could try and sneak a very pale sort of... I mean... I don't know if Earth would have had them. I'm not sure if it would have had grass yet. So we're going to have it as a very sort of rocky. I mean, we could try and make it look a little sort of volcanic sort of terrain still. It's still not sorted itself out yet. So something like that. So obviously it's got its ocean because the bombardment period would have given it oceans or given it water from material that crashed into Earth. Maybe that's a still a little too... I want to make it a little darker. Like volcanic sort of still sort of... Yeah. Clouds are fine, atmosphere's fine. So there, there's a rough interpretation of an early Earth. Obviously, that's subject from person to person, what you believe and think. So Earth, early Earth, now on to Theia. So Theia, obviously, should be around the size of Mars. So I should actually compare it to a Mars, just for instance. So, uh, so Mars is normally 0 0.532. So what's this? So this is 0 0.455 um, Earths. So kilometers... Mars is around 3,300, so we'll have it a little smaller than Mars. So somewhere around there. So it was around Mars size, they theorized, so... Maybe we have a little larger than Mars then, so it's a little more of a competition for the Earth. Um, what we'll do with you as well, I mean, who knows if this was habitable or not at some point, but we'll, we'll give it an atmosphere just to make it a little more interesting. So this is where the fantasy part comes in, just to make it a little more pretty. So atmosphere does have an atmosphere already, so why is our atmosphere not showing up? Come on, where's our atmosphere? Come on. No? Atmosphere color. Play. No, no atmosphere. Okay, what we'll do is we'll replace the Theia with a Mars. And what we'll do is we'll completely refresh this Mars into a whole new object. So we'll have to check how orbit works again. So, okay, that's still sort of going to clash with the Earth orbit. Okay. Uh, also, we're going to need to name it Theia. Good, good. Right. And then we want to completely reset our surface. So we want a fresh, fresh world to experiment with. So there you go. Good, good. Right, um, size, I mean, that's fine. Let's go back to kilometers, for instance. Make it a little larger than the current Mars size. So around there, a little more massive. Right, customization time, right. Is our atmosphere there? Where's our atmosphere gone? Stop removing our atmosphere, game. Come on. Um, okay, surface pressure. Should we turn that up? No, atmosphere. Why can't we see our... Ah, there you go. Okay, cool. So we've got it on now. I'll leave it with the sort of Marsy, sort of dusty color. How about that? So... It's got a slight sort of reddish to it. I mean, we can we can change it up a bit just to make it a little more interesting. I mean, what maybe maybe it could be maybe it could have been like a more toxicy well, it's more of an orange sort of shade. Uh, surface colors, also we can customize this as well. So what are we thinking for this? 
yeah, I'll go, I'll go with a dark sort of shade for it. How about that? So, or maybe like, maybe a sort of dusty sort of appearance. Maybe more of a, I mean, who knows what Faya could have been? I mean, we're never going to know that. So, I'll roll with that. Something like that for Faya. So, not, not too, not too complex. Uh, and interface, I guess, it's just a light sort of. Okay. Looking good. So, Faya and Earth are fairly, yeah, they're fairly fitting in there. Cloud colour, I mean, I don't know if we'll see many clouds, but we'll go with white clouds. Not a big fan of that white patch at the top there. Can we, can we get rid of that? Oh, I do like the, the dark colour, actually. I think that does actually look quite good. So, go with a more greyish colour. And then the low elevation, I think we'll go with a uh, more of a sort of orangey colour. Okay, so there's a fair. So this is all up to how you want to interpret it. But there, there you go. There's a sort of... Oh, no, I really don't like that. Orange is way too much in the south. Right. Something like that. Maybe maybe we'll make the, the dark a little more greyish. Okay, there we go. So there's a fair. Right? I'm not going to keep playing around with that. So we'll roll with that. So there's a fair. Again, we need to quickly just change its orbit up because it did get messed up when we had to replace it. So how are we doing here? So eccentric, a little tiny bit because we do want it to cross with that earth orbit a bit. So... Something like that, and then obviously we can rotate it round so it sort of crashes into the Earth's orbit. So, they, yeah, they sort of merge into each other, so we can see their orbits are fairly, fairly similar there. And then we'll have that. Yeah, so they really sort of collide in there. And then uh, up to a little uh, further out, just so it collides with the Earth a um, bit as well. So, so I do want them to be sort of really colliding with each other a lot, these two orbits. So... Maybe, maybe a little further out from the Sun somewhere. Yeah, there we go. So that, that will definitely clash with the Earth's orbit, as we can see. So there's Faya. Okay, good, good. So this, if when we start playing this, this would either reject fail or collide it with the Earth, which is the preferred option. So, young solar system, we'll give it a refresh. Okay, so now we have Mars. So Mars should be nice and easy to build. So, okay. Good, good. Right. Mars. Let's go with you. So where are we going to place Mars? I mean, Mars, I mean, it should be fairly similar to where it is right now. So 1.6-ish AU, I'd say. One point, yeah, somewhere there. 1.6, I'll roll with that. Right, so there's the inner solar system built. Um, and obviously, we're going to customise Mars just a bit as well. Make it a little more interesting. So, Mars is already sized. Uh, the surface of Mars, I mean, the f there's also the theory Mars had liquid water on it. So, maybe we could try. I mean, yeah. maybe just a tad. See what we end up with. Just a tiny bit. Obviously, it needs to sort itself out. Because um, this would still be in the bombardment period area as well. So, I mean, I don't know if water really would have been on, but we can have it just for a bit of fun. So, what I want to do are you... I'm not going to reset its surface, but I am going to customise it so it looks different, completely different to the way it is now. So, a lot more um, sort of dried out. Obviously, the dusty Mars, as we know now, hasn't fully come into play yet. So, something like that. I mean, it's still being bombarded a lot, so... Okay, so how are we thinking that that high elevation needs to go? Because that's where the volcanoes are. So I guess we could have that as a whitish area. We'll, we'll sort of rot We'll just we'll change how it looks as well, just to make it a little more interesting. Right, colours. We need a more variant in the colours, I think. So I really do like the black and the grey on the Mars texture. I think that does actually look really cool. Um, so let's try and actually sneak some water on. I'll give Mars a slightly more higher atmosphere. Because maybe when it's being bombarded, it's sort of built up the atmosphere a bit more. But obviously Mars... Maybe it couldn't hold on to the atmosphere, so we'll give it an increase in atmosphere. Obviously, not as much as Earth would have. So, for instance, how much is that? 0 0.880. I mean, we could probably try and sneak away with that. Mars's atmosphere. I mean, we could try and maybe keep the colour on there as well. Um, I, I just want to make it so we can have some uh, water going on. So, okay, so that's... Ooh, okay, it's throwing itself out. But I do want... Even if it's just frozen water, I do want to, just a nice bit of liquid water. Or, or anything at all, so... Can we do it to 20 degrees just so it warm up? At 20. Enter. Okay. So that will obviously freeze over time. But that's actually looking really good, actually. I really like the way that's coming out. Um, I do want to melt. I do want just want to see the liquid water rolling on Mars in the early days. So melt. Okay, there you go. So that will eventually freeze up and sort itself out. But we're going to leave that for the time being. Um, how are we looking at? So... Yeah, no, I don't think it's still got to be dark. But I am liking the way that is sort of coming together. High elevation again. The volcano. See the high elevation. It makes the volcanoes really. Oh, that's just because we've added water to it as well. But the volcanoes also be the high points. Okay, I, I really like in the way the early Mars is coming along. I'm, I'm going to decrease the water just a tad bit. I think there's a little too much water going on there. Uh, how, how's the whole object looking? So, 
It's obviously in the north and the south areas. The volcanoes do look a little crazy. I'm going to leave it like that. So there's an early Mars prototype. I mean, did it have water? Did it? I mean, it has water on it now, so it got the water from somewhere. So we'll have liquid water on it, but eventually that would freeze up as to the way it is now. So that's an early sort of Mars prototype going on. How about the atmosphere? Maybe, maybe you can make a little more friendly looking atmosphere. Maybe just a, that's a little too much, but maybe just a, maybe maybe that was a steamy sort of atmosphere. So grayish cloudiness, maybe got a, sort of a very pale sort of bluish gray in there. See, so Mars hasn't really sort of figured itself out yet either. Maybe we've got a little too much gray on it. I mean, what, what other color could be really used? Though? I mean, the elevation on Mars is obviously a lot different to the other ones, so. Yeah, you, the colours really sort of have to work. But, I mean, maybe we could try going for the more sort of Mars as we know it today. So maybe a bit of that deserty sort of orange sort of built in in the early days of Mars as well. Ooh, I, I, I do like the dark. But I think the dark with the sort of grey... It's still, still figuring itself out. Got a bit of water going on. Obviously, that would eventually disappear over a long period of time. But, yeah, there's an early Mars sort of uh, build. So well, how are we thinking? Atmosphere's fine. Uh, cloud colour... Go have white steamy clouds if there's any at all. Ice color. That's fine. I'll leave that the way it is. Interface will go with a more sort of... I guess we'll go with a grayish sort of... Somewhere somewhere like that, I guess. So, right. Early solar system constructed. So, what do you think of that? So, young sun. Mercury. Mercury's the only one we haven't customized. I mean, I don't think there's really much that needs to be done. I think Mercury... There's no theory that Mercury ever had sort of oceans or anything like Venus or Mars. So... There's Venus. I'm really happy with the way the Venus looks as well. I think they're really cool. So then we have Mars still sorting itself out. Okay, so there's the early solar system sort of built. So I'm going to save it. We'll get a lineup of all the objects. I think that'll look pretty cool as well. So early solar system prototype. Okay, so then we'll have a little experiment as how the solar system sort of turns the way it is now. So we've got it saved. So now we can have a bit of fun with it. So young sun. Don't need to touch the sun. So let's actually have a line up. We'll see how, see how the objects are actually looking. So what are we... How, how's, how are they all looking down here? Obviously, gas giants are the finest way are. We've got the fifth gas giant here. Fifth gassy. Then we've got the rocky worlds. We've got Earth. Not as we know it. We've got Venus. Not as we know it. We have the theoretical Theia in there. We've got Mars. Not as we know it. Mercury. Barely similar to where it is now. We've got Triton as its own dwarf planet. The king of the uh, dwarf planets. Then we have Eris. Pluto, for some reason, isn't as large. Because Pluto's always glitching around. Uh, kilometers. This should be one two nine. But is it one two nine three? I think Pluto normally is somewhere. I know it's larger than Eris. Uh, what, what's Pluto normally? We need to. We need to fix that. It's going to bug me otherwise. Pluto is. Uh, where are I? Pluto? Pluto. Pluto. You're going to let me. How large are you, Pluto? Normally, let's just spawn it in then. Uh, so it should be zero point one eight six Earths. Okay. So in kilometers, that is. 1186. Okay, so it was not 1, 2, it's 1, 1. Right, so uh, Pluto. And then uh, kilometers. So 1186. There we go. Pluto has um, the size it should be. I'm not going to customize the Kuiper Belt objects. They're going to they're gonna stay the same as they normally are. So let's actually just put in the name 1186. So if we ever forget again, it's there. Because the Pluto likes to reset itself when you save simulations. So, okay, Pluto's in there. Looking good. Right, so we're going to go ahead and save it again. Then we'll have a full lineup of all the objects of how they should be. So I really like, I really, really like the way the, the orbits look. So I did use my, I built this off my enhanced solar system template. So, so yeah, the Kuiper Belt objects already had their orbits customized. So I think that does actually look really cool. So save. Yeah, very happy with the way this is looking, I have to say. And hopefully you guys have enjoyed uh, the video up to this point as well. But I really, really like the way this has uh, come together now. So now back to the, the uh, center here. Oh, and actually, one thing as well, before we actually look at them again, the solar, the sun, obviously, it's not as luminous, luminous as it is um, currently, because it's only at 0 0.7 suns, they're not as bright, and Venus is actually in that, in the greenish bit, you can see it's on the border between red and green, probably just slightly in the red there, but yeah, Venus, a little more, um, a little more friendly than it is now, so that would eventually also heat up as the sun gets brighter, and actually, what we'll have to do is make the sun one luminous of sun, and see what it would do to Venus, and see if it would end up similar to how it is now obviously we'd have to add that atmosphere pressure on as the water would vaporize the atmosphere would build up more clouds trapping the heat in and stuff so right looking good we'll turn that off again but let's get a line up of all our bodies now so labels off so jupiter saturn uranus neptune also you'll find the way they are the fifth gas giant earth venus 
Faya as well. Oh yeah, Faya in there. That's cool. Mars, Mercury. Then we have Triton as the Kuiper Belt King. Pluto, Iris, and then obviously all the other dwarf planets. We're not obviously going to go to any of those, but yeah, they're all built in there. A few of the asteroid belt objects as well. But now, remember, I said this was in the bombardment period era, or era. So back to the uh, sun. We need to add the actual asteroids in. So asteroid belt, and this is going to be obviously a lot different. So we're going to make it very, very busy in the inner solar system as well. So for instance. Uh, in a radius, we're going to have this closer than the orbit of Mercury. So Mercury is about 0 0.5 SAU at the moment, isn't it? So this is going to be 0. Point, yeah, Mercury will be involved, 0 0.4 AU. And then we're going to have it going all the way out to, say, 20-ish AU. So that's roughly where Neptune's sitting. Actually, no, we'll have it going all the way out to the Kuiper Belt. So we'll have it at 40, yeah, 40, 0 0.4 to 40 material. That's fine to add to the young sun. So... A lot of materials still flying around in the early solar system. So is that is that added them in? Can we can we see? Uh, no, uh, flashlight. No, add add to the sun rings. Come on. Are they there? Uh, oi, add add to sun. Come on. If we have the sun. Let's try that again. That's they the asteroid or adding the rings menu has always been a little funny since the newer versions of the game. So let's try that again. So asteroid belt. Thank you. Right. So we want zero point four. And then this goes all the way out to 40. Hey, why did that reset? That's not what we want. 40. There you go. And then, wait. Right. 0 0.4. Enter. Right. Add to the young sun. Are they in it? What, what? Add our rings, damn it. Add ring. Oh, oh, there. oh, I just clicked it a little too many times. I think they're in there. Yeah, they're in there. Right. So let's quickly just control D. Add it once. Is it going to add them? Oi. Add, add my rings. Oh, I added them a minute ago. Now it's not added them. Come on. Oh, really? Really, game? You're going to play us like that? Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, they are in there. Okay, right. So now we can remove all that. Right. So the uh, asteroids are in there. We just can't see them yet. So. And then we are on flashlight. But where are they? Oh, this is really bizarre, isn't it? Oh, it's probably because they're covering such a huge. Ah, there you go. There you are. Right. Now it looks better. It's because we wasn't zoomed out enough. Right. So, solar system's still very, very busy. There's a lot of material. It's the bombardment period, isn't it? So, lots and lots of particles flying around, crashing into the planets and stuff. So, very, very occupied inner solar system, outer solar system, all, all flying around there. Now, that, as far as I'm concerned, that is the complete sort of early solar system. Possibly, possibly not. But there's my little attempt at trying to build it. So, there we go. And actually, what I think I will do, um, yeah, we'll save and replace. Right, now we'll have a little play with it. So we're not going to go too crazy. We can always return to it for another video if we want to. We're going to save that. So what we're going to do first is I'm just going to let it run. And we're going to see if the fifth black, yeah, the fifth gas giant actually gets ejected. That's what I want to see in universe. So we may have to remove the asteroids for obvious reasons. Because, I mean, there's a lot going on in there. But let's have it going. So Earth and Theia, for instance. I mean, Venus has broken out. I mean, yeah, the inner solar system. That's going to be very hard to replicate. So we ignore the inner solar system. Mercury's been ejected as well. See, I'm not sure the rings are making it realistic. So we'll actually reopen the sim this time. So where are we? So young solar system, thank you. Let's go back. Going to hit the dumb rings. Or the dumb so, yeah, because usually the more objects the simulation has to simulate, the more unlikely or less realistic it would sort of play. So now we'll have it like that. Right, play. Right, speed it up. So we should be seeing an Earth and Theia instance here. So, right, and I want to see... So we are on orbit mode. So th this outer solar system area, this fifth gas giant should have some sort of gravitational impact on it. So Earth and Theia, keep an eye on Earth and Theia. That's probably where the first instance is going to happen. So... Going to see, will they collide, will they not? I mean, it'll be really cool to see if they're actually colliding. So, yeah, I'll have to do another video on this and actually do all the stuff that sort of led to our current solar system. I think that'd be quite cool, and I'm sure you guys have enjoyed that. Let me know. Would you want to see a video of me sort of turning this system into the solar system we have today? What would you think of that? Would that be a cool video? Let me know down below. But let's um, have a little go at it. So... Earth and Theia, come on, they need to collide eventually. I mean, it's because they're in such similar orbits. So what we could do, actually, to make things a little more interesting is we'll manually sort of bring them together. So we're going to speed up Theia. This looks like it's smoking up, actually. But remember, this is an early version of the solar system still forming. So we don't have to worry about that. So what we're going to do, Theia, we're going to speed it up. 
So we're going to have it right near where the Earth is. And we're going to see what happens as these two get together. I mean, well, you should be able to spot one from the other one. Yeah, I mean, let's see. Uh, oh, you can see it all right. It is over there. So they are yeah, they're getting in the dangerously close. I mean, that that is... Um, and obviously, the orbits are going to cross as they get closer. So we're going to slow down time. We're going to watch as the Earth and Theia sort of plays out. So here we are. So we're looking at Earth. Orbits off. We'll, trail, we'll put trails on. No, that's a little too much, actually. But, yeah, Faya is there. So, <laughs> these guys, in theory, should be getting quite close. I mean, that, that is that is really close. So the two the two titans of the inner solar system having a little brawl. I mean, they are... That is dangerously, dangerously close. So, their orbits are going to continually bounce off each other until they eventually come together at the very far end there. So, let's uh, have a little another play of it, see if they eventually... I, I really want to see them collide. I think that would be really cool to actually have it play out. Earth and Faya having a bright brawl with each other as they come together. It's obviously going to take a while for Faya to come around and catch up Earth. Because their orbits are so similar. So it's going to take forever for one to catch the other one up. So, I mean, yeah, the uh, collision between Earth and Faya, I mean, to, for it to actually happen. I mean, it would have taken quite a while in just the right circumstances for the Earth to actually pull. Or Faya or Earth to pull each other together and actually form that collision in the first place. Then that would obviously in possibly form the moon. I mean, that's still debatable, but... Let's just see. So, Faye is really not having a good time, is it? So, right. Um, we'll have another shot at trying to bring them together here. So, we'll slow down time. But I really want to, really want to have them come together here. I think that'd be really cool to say, have it happen. So, they've missed the point. They have to collide in that sector there. Well, we have actually got another part here where Earth and Faye should be getting. I mean, they're always dangerously. That is dangerously, dangerously close. So, well, this is going to be quite hard to get correctly. Maybe, uh, so if we increase, so we need to decrease the number. So uh, we'll go to minus 140. That's not how I want to write it out. So minus 140. Okay, that's way, way, way too much. So we'll go to uh, minus 145. Oh, stop. Uh, minus 145. Still too, okay, so let's try again. Just to try and get it exactly in that correct point. So somewhere like that, and then we'll increase the earth a bit. So, this is currently at 114. So, if we put this to 11... God, it doesn't let me delete the number for it. Right, 116. Oh, not 166. No, we want 116. Dear me, I cannot type on the numpad today. Right. Something like that. I mean, where they are... That is just... <laughs> Maybe um, 115. Okay, so... Right, here we go. Let's have a little try here. So, let's see if we can try and bring them together. Uh, oh... That is, that is, that's closer than where the moon is. Look at that. They are stupidly close. So, but actually trying to, they have to be perfectly, perfectly correct for them to actually come together. But I mean, there's, there's a rough try at it. I mean, it still hasn't worked, but yeah, they have to be in the perfect, perfect spots for them to eventually do that. So let's actually speed up and just see if we can get any collision coming between the two. So there we go. And, and oh, don't forget the outer solar system, that fifth gas giant, Jupiter and Saturn should hurt that one a lot and get rid of it eventually as well but remember we're only traveling at one year it took millions of years for the solar system to get the way or billions of years for it to come to the way it is now so i mean it's not going to happen with just a couple of years now is it so the end of solar system that earth and fair i mean they're all how are the orbits actually looking we can see the earth and fair orbits they appear to be slightly changing possibly so how are we looking let's just have a look at the orbits themselves how's the outer solar system looking where's that fifth gas giant gone so fifth gassy Jupiter and Saturn in there. That is surely going to upset it. I mean, let's actually have a look at its um, have a look at its little uh, stat going on here. So, yeah, look at this orbit. Look, it has been affected. You can see the the stats are changing there. So, we just that Jupiter and Saturn just have to come together near the fifth gassy and just toss it out. I mean, it, maybe if we speed up a bit more, how's Earth and Fair looking? See, Earth and Fair, their orbits have changed again. See, it just has to be perfect for them to collide. Like, it's just. You have to be perfect, perfect situation. I mean, this is just a ex brief experiment, but I do want to bring together. And we can see the outer solar system is wobbling. That fifth gas giant being in there with Neptune and Uranus being closer as well. That's really upsetting the outer sort of areas here. And these orbits maybe should start getting inclined a bit as well and more eccentric. So let's have a little more speed up. I mean, we don't want to go too fast, but you can see the orbits are really, really not liking it. But I mean, that is going ridiculously quick now. I mean, 21 years, I mean... How much faster can we go? I mean, something's going to break eventually, surely. That fifth gas giant, it's, it's, it can't hold on, surely. We can see its orbit is really being upset. 
So, yeah, it's constantly changing, but it just has to be that perfect point for the fifth gas giant to be ejected. I mean, how much faster do you want to go? I mean, that's running quite fast. It's probably going to upset my computer as well. I mean, I'm surprised it's actually running this fast quite well, to be honest. Earth and Feyre are still sorting each other's out. Let's see how Venus has sorted it. How hot's Venus now? So, since so Venus has warmed up, so even, yeah, even with um, our little modification, Venus being this close to the sun, it's still, the water just would never have worked. It's just too close to the sun for it to have worked. So it's all dried up. Uh, Earth, how are you looking? So Earth, obviously, minus 56. Now, I wonder why that is. Because Earth and Feyre are still bouncing off each other. 1.2 years to go around the sun. Uh, how's Mars doing? This should have frozen by now. Yep. As expected. So that would have frozen and eventually became the way it is today. Obviously with less less ice than that, of course. But okay, so that's still fine. You see Mercury. And now here's a good example. I put Mercury as a perfectly spherical orbit. Look how Mercury's now actually changed to what it roughly is at the moment. It's more eccentric. So Mercury's actually played out fairly well to how it should have gone. So you can see that's going roughly well. But that fifth gas giant is what I really want to see. I mean, oh, oh so what was that? That was Mercury, oh dear. I'm running it too fast. Whenever you run a simulation too fast, the inner objects always start going crazy. So we'll just go and delete that for the time being. So yeah, we'll just ignore that. So Venus and Earth are still sawing each other out in there. Earth and Fair, man. I really want them to collide. We will, for we will force a collision in another video, I think. But how are we looking? Fifth gas giant, where are you at? This is this is the one. This is the big one. This is the one that should just get completely shoved out from the way this is designed. Oh, Uranus. No, we don't want Uranus. See, in this case, the system's actually thrown out Uranus. Or, or whatever. No, that was Venus. No, never mind. That's just because the uh, game doesn't like running the inner solar system very well. So, actually, what we'll do is we'll just remove... We'll have Earth and Fair in there, but we'll get rid of Mars as well, just to keep... It. The asteroid belt objects, I don't mind. But, yeah, we'll, we'll just have Earth and Fair in the inner solar system. So, I really want to focus on the outer solar system for this. So... Come on, that ninth planet, fifth, fifth gas giant. We can see as well Pluto's orbit's been uh, interrupted. That wasn't. That's looking more eccentric than it was before. And obviously ne Neptune would eventually get pushed out eventually into its current position as well. But what was that? What's just gone there? So Theia actually got ejected by the Earth in this case. But remember, the sister or well, the circumstances have to be absolutely perfect for it to form a collision. So in this in this scenario, this version of the prototype solar system, Theia actually got ejected. So. Right, there we go. So that's gone. Faye is completely out of the action, so that we can delete that. I don't want to keep running it too more, because I don't want to make the video too long, because I do want to save this for another video to really experiment with this. So Earth and... Uh, oh, it looks like Earth. Is that Earth? It just got tossed out. What was that? Oh, dearie me. So yeah, the solar system, it just cannot run the inner solar system when you speed it up this fast. So, I mean, yeah, it's not really much. It's just the asteroid belt stuff in there now. So we can really sort of focus on the outer solar system. Fifth gas giant. Come on, we want you to get thrown out. <laughs> Come on, this is what should happen. Come on. But again, the circumstances have to be so perfect. Oh, we can see it's all a little change there. So it's all, yeah, it's getting further away. You can see the planet, yeah, the, the fifth gas giant's orbit is really not liking it because it's wobbling more than Uranus or Neptune by miles. Jupiter and Saturn are pushing each other around a bit. But Saturn looks to have got closer to the fifth gas giant, possibly. Uh, so we originally put Saturn around 7 AU, didn't we? So what's Saturn at now? I just clicked on it and it's got a lot of bands. So just have to bear with it. So 7.4. So Saturn's still roughly in that original area. But it's this fifth gas giant needs to be thrown out. Uh, let's look back onto the sun. Play. That fifth gas... Oh, there you go. So, the, yeah, fifth gas is not liking it. So that's going to get tossed out, surely. Jupiter and Saturn are still having a go at it. Come on. They're going to form and push themselves around. We can see. Now the inner solar system is not messing the simulation up anymore. We can see that fifth gas giant is struggling. It's really, really struggling. And it's, yeah, it could go. It could completely go. So let's just turn the orbits off. Remember, we're looking at the blue orbit. There it is. Fifth gas E. We're looking at that. So the, look at the asteroid belt change as well. What's happened there? Is that Saturn's orbit? So look, in this case, Saturn hasn't had a good uh, end of the stick here either. But yeah, we can start to see, as we do play this out, that the gas giants, that fifth gas giant being in there with Neptune and Uranus being closer, that really doesn't like it. But we can see the fifth gas giant has had a real heart. The, yeah, the worst effect has happened to the fifth gas giant here. Um, where's Neptune gone as well? So Neptune has... Look, Neptune has naturally migrated out to the Kuiper Belt, and that's where it would have caught Triton. So... The, Neptune right now, we pull it originally at about 20 AU, and now it's at 28 and Neptune normally sits at this distance. So in this case, our system has actually played out 
realistically, in theory, and Neptune is now in the Kuiper Belt, where it would have eventually encountered Triton. So Neptune's Neptune's actually played out perfectly here. Uh, Uranus is still looks like it's figuring itself out, but yeah, that ninth, fifth gas giant, ninth, planet nine, fifth gas giant. It's not going to hold on, surely. Or oh, we can see Saturn isn't liking it either. But I'm very impressed that Neptune's actually done what it should have done there. I was That is really cool. I thought I would have had to have manually pushed that out. But yeah, Neptune naturally pushed itself out. But yeah, that fifth, that fifth gas giant is really, really struggling to hang on there. What's this? Is this? Oh, that's Chiron. It's being tossed out. Deary me. But I reckon if we kept going, I reckon one of the gas giants is going to go eventually. It has to. And we see Jupiter's orbit, for instance. Jupiter's holding on perfectly fine because it's the largest. It's got the highest mass. It's got the biggest presence. Jupiter's not being pushed by much. But we can see the other ones. Uranus is still hanging on there. I mean, what was Uranus at? So Uranus is now 86 years. So you're, even Uranus has sort of sorted itself out to where it would normally be, possibly. I mean, that's, that is pretty cool how that's actually played out. What is Ceres doing all the way over here? Yeah, this definitely needs to be rerun without all the objects. I, I think we need to run this simulation just with the gas giants and see how we can get it. But looking here, that, that fifth gas giant is not hanging on well at all. And even Saturn. But come on, fifth gas giant. You need to be thrown out. This is what should happen. Come on. You, it's really... I mean, that's starting to form the orbit of Planet Nine, if you think about it as well. So that's, that's quite cool how it's sort of forming the Planet Nine orbit. Let's get rid of Ceres just to... Uh, Make things easier. But yeah, that fifth gas giant, that is looking like a planet nine. Look, there you go. Is it gone? It's really struggling now. That's going to go, surely. But look, you can see Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, they've, they've barely stuck around. And we can see Saturn's still sorting itself out uh, over there for some reason. But Uranus and Neptune, I'm very impressed that they've actually sort of gone to where they should have gone. So you can just see having that extra gas giant and all the planets being closer together in the early version of the solar system, they really don't like being close together. So, yeah, the fifth gas giant has now become the sort of ninth planet theory of being on a really crazy orbit. Obviously not like that, but it's, it's sort of worked its way out there. I mean, that's is it gone? The fifth giant? Yeah, there you go. So after a long period of time, the fifth gas giant has actually gone. It's been tossed out and that's... That is what sort of led to the possible theory of that's what could have upset the Kuiper Belt. And how's the Kuiper Belt looking? So Saturn, for instance, let's actually put Saturn back to where it should be. So let's actually see and Ryan rebuild the system to what it looks like today as a rough example. So for instance, Eccentric, we're just going to put this straight down to zero. And let's sort of see where everything's ended up. So Uranus again, we're going to put you roughly back to... Um, yeah, so you're going you're gonna to go roughly back to zero. So where are we? Hey, go back to zero. Okay, so Uranus is in there. Neptune, how are you looking? So you around, you should be around. But Neptune is almost spot on to where it should be. I'm really, that is really cool how that's actually sorted itself out. Uh, Saturn, how's Saturn looking? So Saturn should be around. Uh, yeah, opening Saturn's quite annoying. Nine, yeah, but even Saturn, I mean, that's, that's not too bad. Uh, it looks like Jupiter eventually. Did Jupiter actually get tossed out? <laughs> where, where's Jupiter gone? Jupiter? Oh, it did get thrown out. For some reason, Jupiter got thrown out. Deary me. So, yeah, there's a complete disastrous um, event there. But we can see, just looking, if we actually... Let's actually bring Jupiter to where it should be. So, where, where are I? Jupiter? Oi. Where, where's it? So, let's actually just delete that. The orbit trails have just gone berserk, haven't they? So, let's just get rid of that. Come on. Oi. Get, oh. Right. Okay. So, let's just get rid of all these other things just sitting out here. But, yeah, I'm definitely going to rerun this just with the gas giants and see what we end up with. So, we'll, so, fifth gas giant's gone. That's fine. That's where it should be. Uh, Kyra, we'll just get rid of that as well. Because remember, this has all the objects in here. Universe Sandbox can't run realistically as well as it can when it's doing it a lot slower. The faster you speed it up, the less realistic it gets. But honestly, uh, the dwarf planets are still looking fairly sort of where they would... Well, they haven't really been affected that much. But I'm very, very impressed with the, how Neptune has migrated out like that. That is really, really cool how that's done that. Um, Jupiter, we'll put you back to around 5 AU where you should normally be. So that's where Jupiter should be. So Saturn's actually... Yeah, Saturn's not really done it correctly. Uranus... Yeah, I'd say Uranus has done it. It's done okay. So if I... I'm just going to quickly bring up on a second screen here. So... Right, looking at looking at the present day solar system roughly, so Neptune should be about 30 AU. So we were we got really close to getting Neptune correctly done. So that's 29.5. So that is 
very spot on for, I mean, how the li likelihood of things happening. Uh, Uranus should be around 19 AU, so it's at 11. So Uranus hasn't sorted itself out. So yeah, Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus haven't really figured themselves out. But Neptune was pretty much spot on with where it should be. I mean, the orbit obviously isn't perfect, but I mean, that's that's pretty cool. And, and the fact that the, the ninth planet, or the, the fifth gas giant, actually got ejected. I mean, that's cool. That is really cool. So, yeah, that, that isn't coming back, is it? I mean, that's that's at it. So, fifth gas giant ejected. It looks like Saturn just got ejected as well. Dearie me, because we put Jupiter back in. But, yeah, I'm quite impressed with how that ended up. But, yeah, there you go, guys. So, that's a rough example of the early solar system and how it sort of came to be the present day. Well, for Neptune, anyway. We've got Neptune, correct? But, yeah, I do want to run this again with just the gas giants and then we'll do an episode for the inner solar system and try and turn that into the present day as well but yeah there you go so there's my um rough draft of a possible version of the early prototype solar system the solar system in its earlier days so obviously the asteroids are here it's during the bombardment period the objects are still picking up material being bombarded earth is still collecting water from all of the asteroids containing water possibly venus and mars as well yeah, I'm very, very happy with the way that's uh, turned out. So, yeah, let me know your thoughts and opinions down below, guys. Is there anything I could have done or anything I shouldn't have done? Let me know down below in the comments. But remember, it's all theoretical. We don't know for sure, and we probably never will. But I'm, I'm very pleased with how the outer solar system sorted itself out there. Obviously, it wasn't perfect. But the, the fact that the fifth gas giant actually got tossed out and Neptune migrated out, that, I think that is really cool how that's actually played how it should have done. So, yeah, very, very pleased with that. But, yeah, guys, again, like I said, let me know. What do you think down below in the comments? And also, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. So, if you did, make sure to hit that like button. Let's see if we can go for a big 60 likes on today's video, guys. So, make sure to press that like button. Let's see if we can hit that goal. And also, subscribe for more. Help us on the journey to 20,000 subscribers. We are getting so, so, so close. Let's see if we can try and get that before the end of March. That'd be absolutely amazing. We'll have to do a special video or something like that. We'll get to that when that comes, though. But, yeah, there we are, guys. So, yeah, again, massive thank you for watching. Subscribe, leave a like, and, yeah, guys, make sure you all have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.